I can't talk right now because I'm like so tired. My sentences are not becoming words. My words are not becoming sentences. That's the correct order, Avery. Oh my god. <laughs> Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and welcome to the start of my Smutathon reading vlog. It is midnight right now. It is the very start for Smutathon and I am super duper tired. I've had the whole week off of my regular job. I'm a nanny. I take care of a pair of twins. Their family has been out of town for a whole week so I haven't been working for them for a week and I haven't had my normal schedule. They finally came back in town today so I start work again tomorrow and I'm so it's tired and i'm just not used to probably getting up at the same time now because i got to like sleep in during this week and all that jazz so it's gonna be a little bit of a wake-up call for me but anyway i want to talk about what my reading plans were for the start of the week first off i wanted to say if you didn't know what smutathon is and you don't know what books i'm going to be reading and don't know the summaries for them i'm not going to be talking about the summaries of any of these books in this video i will link down below my tbr video my to be read video for the smutathon in which i go in depth of each summary of each book that i'm going to talk about in this reading vlog so if you want to know what each book is about be sure to go check out that video before this one starts so you're not confused. <laughs> my physical read that I'm going to start with is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is probably my most anticipated read for the week. This book came out in May at the beginning of May and I still haven't read it yet as I've been waiting to read it during this marathon. so I for sure am going to start out with this book. I'm not going to read it tonight before I go to sleep because I am dang tired and I just want to curl up with my phone in the dark and then fall asleep so I'm probably going to start this sometime tomorrow for ebooks for like in a couple minutes before i go to sleep i'm gonna pick up an ebook i haven't decided which one i'm kind of on the fence between two right now it's either between hannah's hero or a girl like her i don't know which one yet it depends on where i lay down and which mood i'm in either a contemporary romance or a sci-fi romance hey y'all it is the next day or rather way later in the day it's almost midnight for the fourth so right now it's still Monday the third but at 11 30 at night and I thought I would chat with you about my reading update for the day while I get my hair ready for bed because if y'all know I have really bad chronic migraines like really bad and so apparently I figured out that I cannot sleep with my hair up in any way anymore I woke up the other morning with my hair in a knot like a top knot and I woke up and almost like passed out because of how dizzy I was and I immediately took out my hair and just felt so much better I was like I can't sleep in a bun anymore and I don't I haven't done that in a long while but like I did an exception for the other night and I just can't sleep in a bun anymore so I have to brush it out and sometimes even low braid it while I sleep. I'm gonna get my hair ready for bed while I talk with y'all about my reading update. So far I am 30% of the way through A Girl Like Her. I decided to pick that book up last night before I went to bed. I decided to start it. I am almost done with my audiobook for the week, which is crazy. Forever My Girl, it is around a seven hour audiobook, and I only have around two and a half hours left. That's because today at my job, I didn't see the kids today. I just did some household chores for them for around three hours and I listened to my books at 1.5 or 1.75 speed so I got a lot of listening done today. Forever My Girl makes me cringe often. <laughs> For a girl like her, I'm actually really enjoying it. I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I am. Um, One of the main things is our main character girl is autistic and I had no idea until she told this person yes I'm weird I'm autistic and I was like oh whoa I just thought she was um just a little quirky because I'm a little quirky and I kind of related to her and so I was like oh wow didn't even expect that which um this guy is loving this girl not loving her that's not at that point yet but this guy is really digging do people still use that word digging or vibing I think that's worse <laughs> vibing with this girl he loves her little quirks in their conversation she lo he loves how blunt she is and how like to the point she is so i'm loving how he's so accepting of her i think that's great i know a lot of people 
who are autistic who have autism. I just love how that is represented in this book. Other than that, I haven't read anything else. I haven't started the Unhoneymooners. I think I'm just going to read A Girl Like Her before I go to bed. My hours got pushed back again tomorrow just because the kids I need have some summer activities starting up so they don't need me as much as they used to during the school year. I will have a little bit more time to read tomorrow. Oh, my arms are like falling asleep because of my pots. They're hurting. Ow, 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 ow. Because of my um, blood flow thing, pots, um, it, t it, it takes a lot out of me to put my hair up for that long, put my arms up for that long because then the blood just pools. Um, give me a minute. <laughs> I think I did a loose braid. That'll feel better. I just can't have tight hairdos anymore. I can't even wear tight headbands anymore. I can't even wear like any headbands anymore because it just gives me a headache which I don't understand. But anyways, I'm gonna get to reading and I will update y'all later. Hey y'all, it is the next day. Sorry, I'm only finding time to film at night. But yeah, it's 11. 30? 11.30 at night. And I just got home from babysitting really late. While I was babysitting, I finished A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. I actually really enjoyed this one. I give it a four out of five stars. I'm just really tired and I can't really form my thoughts right now. So I think I'm going to talk about it tomorrow or when I have time. I might have the day off tomorrow. I don't know yet. So we'll see. I'm way too tired to talk right now. I think I'm gonna make a little midnight snack and finish my season three rewatch of Survivor and head off to bed because I've already finished one book today. So I think I'm I'm good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry for the bedhead. I don't really care because I need to take a shower anyway because my hair is nasty. I just got a text from my boss saying that I have the day off. I'm going to be reading and doing some work around the house today. I think I'm going to start The Unhoneymooners. Thank goodness I've been wanting to read it for so long. I was going to talk about my feelings and thoughts towards a girl like her. I really enjoyed the um, representation for autism. I really loved that. She basically told this person, the reason why I'm so weird and why people call me weird is because I'm autistic. It's like, okay, cool, great, wonderful. Like, that's cool. And it just goes to talking about regular things and it's never really brought up or like mentioned again, which is a good thing because like, it doesn't really matter, you know? So I enjoyed that aspect. The reason why I did not give it five stars is just because it's not a new favorite for me. Um, I only give books five stars when they're like, a new favorite. I also want to say I loved how our main character wasn't a skinny mini. Like there are so many books that have skinny minis in them and she's just basically like I'm not skinny but I'm not like fat but like I got rolls. Like she talked about her rolls sometimes and I was like girl yes <laughs> I get those too all the time like I have that like I'm not skinny and I'm not fat but like you're chub. You're chub. Like I know I'm chub. Like I love books that talk about girls that are chub and like love the fact that they're chubby and yeah. But anyways, I gotta go fix this because it's looking gnarly. I gotta go wash my hair, eat some breakfast, get some work done, and then I'm allowed to read. Yes. <laughs> hey y'all, it's later and I just got this package in the mail and I know what it is and I'm excited to unbox it. I'm so excited to see it. Oh my god. Oh. It is a signed poster of It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Signed by Colleen Hoover. This is my favorite book by her and I got this for like 10 bucks off her website. It is so pretty. This is gonna be like my new prized possession <laughs> because It Ends With Us is one of my favorite books of all time and it's my favorite book by her for sure. So I'm so happy that I have this and I have to figure out where I'm gonna put it because it's so pretty and it's signed by her. 
Oh my god, I'm so, so happy. I'm gonna cry like looking at this. <laughs> oh, it ends with such an emotional roller coaster. So I totally recommend to everybody, please go read it. It's wonderful. Oh my gosh, it looks like I don't have any eyebrows. <laughs> I did not put my eyebrows on today because I'm not leaving the house. <laughs> oh my god, it looks like I literally have nothing on my face. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So it is a little while later. And I just finished listening to Forever My Girl by Heidi McLaughlin. I did not like this book. This is very 2012. This was made in 2012. Steamy scenes were not good. And there was only maybe one. There was only barely one. It was not good. The dialogue was very cringy. There's an aspect to cheating in this book, which was horrible. I might get a little spoilery. If you don't want to get spoiled, then... Um, skip until I put my hand down, but I don't really see the point in you going to read this book because I don't think it's worth it, you know? So at one point, our main character cheats on her fiance with this guy who was the love of her life 10 years ago, who left her. Her fiance is kind of a dick sometimes and he gets very frustrated. He just wants to be with his family and he's raised this woman's son since he was three. He's getting the short end of the stick and basically it's getting put off to the side because the dad came back after 10 years and she wants to be with him instead. Like, I think that's such a douchey, dicky, bitchy move. I did not like it. I did not, I didn't like it. The only reason why I did not give it a one star is because I don't think it's necessarily like a horrible trash book. I know there are certain elements that I did enjoy. I really liked Noah's character who was the son but like there were just things that like like for something like grinded my gears a little bit was that like one of um the main character's best friends she has a pair of twins and you only read about one of the twins like you don't get to learn about the other one at all there's twins and you should know about both of them why are you only putting pain into the limelight like what about this other girl i don't even know her name there's just certain aspects of this book that i did not enjoy and i don't recommend it hey y'all it is the next day i am just driving home from work and I thought I would give you all a little update. So I actually started Hannah's Hero today. I think I'm around 15% of the way through that and I'm enjoying it so far like all Ice Home books <laughs> and I'm on page 167 of The Unhoneymooners and I'm loving it. So basically part of the summary that I didn't know that's like in a summary is that um, the main character Guy's girlfriend also like shows up on the honeymoon that they go to. So Olive and Ethan have to like convincingly pretend that they're married now because his girlfriend is there. His ex-girlfriend is there and it is so funny. This book has made me laugh out loud at least three times like before page 50. I don't even know how many times since then. I hope to finish the unhoneymooners today because it is so good and i just want to know what happens it is later in the day technically the next day because it is 1 30 at night and i just finished the unhoneymooners by christina lauren before i talk about this i just want to say i have around half of my pets <laughs> sitting in my bed we got mr oreo great we got miss willow you wanna say hi? We've also got Miss Kiki back there. Katniss. She's in a little bit of a mood since it's raining. <laughs> she doesn't like thunderstorms. And lastly, you couldn't even see him. Here's Mr. Ollie. Trying to sleep. <laughs> He only sleeps with blankets on top of him. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna talk with my cat cleaning himself. Are you done? No? You're not done? Are you are you done now? Can I talk? No? I can't talk? Hello? You're done? I loved this. <laughs> I've been hearing some like mediocre reviews or like Four stars isn't mediocre, but it's not my normal rating for a Christina Lauren book. Other than the Beautiful Bastard series, I've given those all basically four stars. I had a little bit of low expectations going into it just because a few people that I follow on Goodreads had already posted their reviews and I'd ne I hadn't seen anyone post a five star yet. I think Oreo has found a bug. That's why you see his ears. 
in the shot. <laughs> gonna go get him? Oh, gonna go get him. <laughs> Oh, Willow, no, not you, hun. <laughs> oh, you're just trying to chase a body. Your cuckoo bites are sleep. You good girl, good girl. You're so sweet. <gasps> Thanks for looking out for me, but I don't need protection. I think I just had low expectations going into it because I read other people's reviews, but I actually loved how there wasn't that much steam to it. Like, I was fine with it. I actually really enjoy it. Like, I know this is like the Smutathon and it's supposed to be about romance and everything. There was romance in this book, but family had a huge, huge part in it. And I loved that. Because our main character has this um, twin sister. They come from this big Hispanic family and they're just like wonderful to read about. It made my heart sore and I was like hooked. Like I was only a little bit over 150 pages by the time I started reading at 1030. And I read all the way up to the last page which is like 390 something. And it's 130. Like I had to finish this book. And I get up for work tomorrow at 7 lip and 30 like i haven't stayed up this late to read a book in so long i just wanted to know what happened so glad that i stayed up to finish it because it was wonderful i loved it one of my new favorites for sure hey y'all it is actually two days later i did not vlog yesterday because i was super super duper busy i had a nine to five shift yesterday and then i went to my cousin's graduation party so I didn't really have time to film at all because then I crashed right after I came home. I ended up getting 50% of the way through Hannah's Hero by Ruby Dixon. Let me throw the ball. And then I also started Broken Prince by Aaron Watt. I am on page 23, I believe. Yeah, 23. Another throw. Go get it. And I'm really enjoying it so far because it's told in the guy's perspective in this book. The first book was all told in the point of view, first person of um, the main character girl, and now we have first person of the main character guy. So it's really interesting. I'm gonna read outside for a little bit with my doggies. Yes. Okay. Can I can I have the ball? Can I have the ball? <coughs> Don't bark at me. <coughs> Give me the ball. So I will update y'all later when I have another update. <laughs> It is later in the day. It is 2.30 in the morning. Later in the day, technically the next day, Sunday, last day of the readathon. And I just finished Broken Prince by Aaron Watt. It ended on another cliffhanger and I am hating myself. <laughs> I don't like cliffhangers and the past two books have had the two biggest cliffhangers I've ever read in my entire life. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to rate this book yet. I'll probably talk about it in like the wrapping up portion of this vlog, but right now I don't know what I'm gonna rate it. Let's just say it's a very quick read and I was really invested. It has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of problematic elements. Like I think of it as like a really typical soap opera, but instead of it being adults it's with teenagers with some adults sprinkled in there. It's very problematic, very overdramatic. A lot of stuff would not happen in real life, especially in high school. I find it funny at points because it's like that. Anyway, I'm going to sleep. Because it's late. It is 10.30 at night, the last day for the Smutathon, and I finished Frigid by Jennifer L. Ermintrout. I don't even think I told her that I started this book. I had almost completed Bingo in like two different spots. I think it was read a book with um, one word in the title or read a book that intimidates you. I only had one day to read this book and Frigid was just a way shorter book. It was 250 pages compared to my 
intimidation book which was like 300 something pages i decided to give this book a three out of five stars the thing with jennifer l armandrout she's a big hit or miss for me some of her books are my favorites of all time my favorite book of the year is wait for you by jennifer l armandrout i enjoyed myself reading it found it addictive the main gripe i had is that it was very 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 predictable and i hate the word babe or babe baby as a term of endearment and that was used often but that's just my personal preference i know people probably don't care but i it makes me cringe reading it the dialogue was cringy at times i will say the steamy scenes were very very well written like it was a very well written story and the characters were great but it's very predictable and i found some situations very cringy i love friends to lovers in romance books i don't read a lot of them so that's why i was also really excited for this it's 10 30 at night i'm not gonna read anything else <laughs> but anyways i will update you in the next clip as to what i read during this whole readathon hey y'all it is a couple days later and i am just here to wrap up this reading vlog so i wanted to go over all five of the books that i read during the sweatathon. So the first thing that I read this week was A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. I gave this a four stars and this was one of the ebooks that I read. This completed two challenges. This completed read a book from an author of color and a new to you author. The second book that I read was Forever My Girl by Heidi McLaughlin. I gave this book two stars and it was my audiobook for the week and this completed the challenge for Second Chance Romance. The third book that I read was The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I gave this book a five out of five stars and this completed three challenges. This completed the vacation romance, fake dating, and enemies to lovers. This was my favorite book of the week for sure. The fourth book that I read this week was Broken Prince by Erin Watt. I am still debating on a rating for this book. I'm leaning in between a 3.5 or 3.75 stars or maybe in between but that's way too way too specific. <laughs> um, and this completed the challenges for Forbidden Romance and Bad Boy slash Bad Girl. The last book that I read during the Smutathon was Frigid by uh, Jennifer L. Armantrout. I gave this book a three stars and this was another ebook that I read. This completed the challenge for Read a Book in a Day a one more title and friends to lovers. I also read half of Hannah's Hero by Ruby Dixon. This didn't complete any challenges though because I did not finish it, but I read half of it, so I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> I ended up getting bingo. Yay me. I really enjoyed my week reading. I found some new favorites, I found some not so favorites, but um I had a really, 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 really fun time reading this week. Please let me know down below if you have any romance recommendations because I'm always up for those. Anyways, thank y'all so so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye! Mm -hmm.